Welcome back to coverage of the White Spruce Open brought to you by Canadian Disc Golf Productions. This is our round three lead card. Final round playing from the blues. Yeah, some of our guys are playing really hot to uh, kind of take a, bit, a gap away from the rest of the field. And the one thing, this is Sunday, so this is actually the second day of the tournament, so the winds are going to be a little bit different. Sponsored by Crypt and Ripped. White, White Spruce, Spruce Club, Club helped out so much with help getting this event prepped. Um, can't say thank you enough to all the sponsors that helped out and uh, anybody on the club who volunteered to get the course prepped and look as good as it did for this turn. James Duong, looking good. Holding the lead by one stroke going into the final round over Chris. Chris is all in. Shooting at minus 10 for Chris right now. Cam Zanini with his halo pole almost cat. almost nails the pole cat roll. Oh, that Joe Vanderveen oh my coming goodness. in a little bit uh, hot. My knees, my knees just exploded <laughs> watching that. It's got hole one. What, what an athletic man. Par three, two hundred ninety nine feet. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of putters for yeah. these guys on this tee. Yeah, little little baby flex with a overstable putter is the way to go here. Just. Trying to get the distance right and uh, just trying, mostly just trying to get anywhere down there near the basket gets you a, a look at your two. So, I have to say, Joe's first time on coverage made a good statement. Yeah. What's he going to do next time? <laughs> so, it looks like James is going to his glow pathfinder. Interesting. Go mid range. He also wearing his Sunday red. I believe on this hole for this day there was actually a left to right wind. That would make sense. That was uh, that was very early for the first throw of uh, James's day. Yeah. Really left the, the spot open. Oh, Oz is also going Globe Pathfinder. Wonder is everyone going Globe? Oh, James no. is. Oh, he's doing it. We got to see it. So this is the. Uh, Huge spike forehand. Yeah. It's a lot of effort. It hurts my arm looking at it, but it works for Oz because he can throw that far. Yeah. I don't know if what happened. There. Yeah, we'll have to wonder. We'll have to uh, check it out when he uh, when he goes to putt it out. But I believe this is Cam's Braxis, which looks great. I think you need that a little higher to get all the way to the basket. So I kind of think you need that overstable putter or stable disc so that you get that little bit of extra distance when it starts to flex out. Oh. Say that looks like a buzz. Oh, but, uh, mm -hmm. right. Joe Joe just squeaks one out early. Doesn't quite get the Anheuser he needed out of it. James from the bush with his Berg. What a great shot. Puts himself <clears> up by the basket. That gives, that gives a potential to roll away, so hopefully he's just sticking there, sticking there close. Cam, a little bit short, giving himself a run. Yeah, I think he was just laying that one up. A little bit early. Okay, so this is where Oz's forehand got him. Just a lot left. Maybe caught a tree, maybe he pushed it a bit far. Kind of, his step putt was on like it was the day prior. It would be a pretty good start. Oh, that was good, close. Close. Just off the left a little bit. James leave going long. Looked like it might have caught a roll. It's a very difficult spot. Those leaves get in your face very, very easy. Mm -hmm. Got to focus your way through it. Oh, just off the top. And he gets another roll away. That one checked up okay, but he's still 20 feet looking at his four putt. Lines it up, and it does not stick. That's not how you want your leader to start your uh, your first round. Get opens up the door for everybody else behind him. Built such a he had such a hot round the day prior. That's not how he'd want to start the third round of the tournament. Taking a five on the first hole. 
All, like, nobody's really like nobody's really put it close. All their upshots have kind of just slid away on them. A little oh. bit of nerves, maybe. Oz gives one back to James. For a taking lot of, the four. A lot of players who've been on played in big tournaments. It seems like there might be a little bit of nerves. Maybe it, it was also windier this day. It's, it's tough to say, but I'm I'm sure Oz and James have played on camera enough to. Uh, to truly not have that many nerves with, with the camera. Maybe just the final day. Joe which is taking... I'm pretty sure what you said. <laughs> I think Cam and Joe take the pars. Yeah. And then we had a double bogey and a bogey. It's a rough start for the card. But well, only one two on that today with Mr. Greg Grutenbohr. Coming in with the two. So on to the next hole. Hole two, 300 feet, par three. You're gonna see either a turnover backhand or a uh, flick from a, or a forehand from a lot of the players uh, up this left hand gap. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Joe's gonna do, but I'm pretty sure everybody is playing forehand on this one. It kind of just fits the hole perfectly. You just have to hit one gap, and then the disc does the rest of the work. Got Cam, I believe, going to his Firebird here. Oh, and that looks good. A little inside, maybe, but that's decent. That was nice of the lead card to make everybody nine down after the first hole, just to give some fighting yeah, contention. That yeah, just on. just to get everybody a nice square. But Joe going forehand Perfect. looks a little bit left, but it's fading out perfectly. That looks part. Just a yeah, little bit down so. the hill. Chris is going to his omen here. Just a little bit oh. right. He catches a tree early. Yeah, just a little inside. We saw him having some problems with his forehand yesterday too, so maybe maybe it's just uh James just can't. Some evidence from that, yeah. James catches the middle tree, which is kind of one he has to have to get lucky by. Can't. Chris finds himself in a very, very tight situation now. There's a lot of trees between himself and the basket. It looks like he's going to give himself a putt. James going to his justice. That's a lot and of diffs to be coming down the hill like that with. Cam goes long yeah, to the he, right. Yeah, he went way right. This has got to be 50, 60 feet right. Not an easy putt. There are a lot of, a lot of trees and not many gaps. Yeah. Just a little low, but that was a, That's great, a great run. Great putt from Cam from that distance on this hill. Oh, it's just outside circle. We all know good, how good his step putt is. Let's see what he can do with it. Very tough because it's also very much uphill too. But he nails oh, it. Gets it. Good. Joe with a great drive to grab the birdie. Fantastic too from from Joe. Only two twos on the on uh, for our third round. Joe and Joe Nut. Seems like. Uh... Joe likes to grab the birdies on the hard holes. Yeah, he just wants the wants the call out. That's what it is. So moving on to hole three, uh, 383 or 338 foot par three. Again, something straight. You're gonna see some guys throw forehand, some backhand. The goal, kind of hit this dirt patch that you see coming up towards the basket. Just get it to skip up the hill a little bit. Yeah, we've already seen this whole play twice before. We know what's got to happen. Let's see if someone can do it this time. Players were able to solve it in the second round yesterday, so I wonder if they're going to be able to figure it out today. Another, another tee pad where you're just throwing, and right at the end of the tee pad is a drop-off, so a lot of people pull themselves up at the last second to protect themselves and that end usually ends up on a yank or an early release. Looks good just oh. 
Maybe a little bit That's lower than he'd like. Mm. A bit more right than he'd like, I guess, too. Yeah. Almost got that dirt patch. This is Cam's rock. No. Three. We've seen it every round. Oh. Just catches the early tree and kicks back. This looks like Chris's pathfinder here. He's able to grab the birdie yesterday. I don't think it's a path. I think that's his votum. That is maybe his vote. That's what he did three. And oh. finds a sneaky gap, but that's, not the gap he'd yeah. like. That's that's not bad. He's, he's going to be up in that tree to the right of the basket with the potential. See if James can figure out this hole. He wasn't able to get it yesterday. Wow. That's a is. nice skip. There it Gives is. He's himself throwing, a pot. He's been throwing that forehand pretty uh, uh, every single round so far. So good to see him actually get the line this time. It looks like a grab. Kind of gripped that a little bit more than he'd like there. Kind of caught his finger at the end. This is where Oz's pull through the uh, through the, the small gap on the right hand side of the fairway got him. It's great. That, very lucky to get out through that foliage there mm -hmm. that he's uh, just in front of. Now he's got a long putt. Just oh. leaves it short. Yeah, it must have been just inside the circle because he didn't step. James is in between the fallen tree there. Tough Just push. gets oh. it through. What a putt. Full confidence from James there. That's what you want to see. Especially after that early miss on hole one. Good to see him get his confidence back quickly. And grabs the birdie. Cam tapping away his par. The other two guys will also do the same here. Great result. Played tough for us. Only one birdie. James yeah. taking the only birdie of the day. Yeah, it's a tough hole down the hill. Down the hill, got to hit a small gap, and you got to get a skip up the hill. So you got to put some pace behind it. Yeah, so moving on to the next hole. We got hole four, 184 foot par three. Again, plays very much uphill for this hole. So mm -hmm. the 184 is probably more like 240, 250-ish. Like. Yeah, I would say so, but there's so many trees in the way that you're just sort of putting one up there and hoping to get a good bounce. We saw Cam and rounds pass go forehand roller, trying to get himself to the bottom of the hill. I'm assuming the rest of them are going to play the same sort of overstable shot high and let it fall. Yeah, so... James going, I believe that's his Firebird again. We got Joe up next. This whole the main thing is just missing that tree in the middle, or don't trying do to that. don't go left. Don't go left. Left is bad. <laughs> left will. <laughs> there is almost nothing from left. You you might be able to get a, like a reach out flex forehand if you got lucky enough, but most of the times that I've ended up there, it turns into a very much a bogey. So. Yes. That looked like it caught early, oh, and it there takes it comes. a bad roll. Yeah, that is a common play here. You, you see you just disappear towards the basket, and then a few seconds later, it just comes rolling on back to you. So interesting, Cam does not go to the forehand roller today. Yeah, he went, he went, uh, oh, Joe got very lucky to be out of the bush. A zone in his hand, mm -hmm. roller. <laughs> That yeah, might buddy. be good. He Great might be able to salvage the par after that drive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Cam went par par on this hole with the forehand roller, so probably maybe decided he wanted to be a little more aggressive and try and take the two to kind of get himself back into the lead here. Cam's looking to grab the birdie here. Yeah, that's from, uh, that, that was his air shot. That's pretty good. Probably 25 feet uphill. Oh, it just oh, goes gets high. It over it. Joe, nice par save. Yeah, from where he was to get that par is, is something else. Could be a lot worse. If he ended up in the bush, par is almost out of the question. So... Great little walk away. This is, there we go. So I think this, with this being it, if James makes this, that's three, uh, 
all threes on this card. Wow. That's um, that was a great three it's good, save. but you really do expect a two there, but understandably so, that's a tough hole. No matter how you play it, you gotta get a little bit lucky. Unfortunately, Oz had the roll away. So, moving on to hole five, 308 foot par mm -hmm. three. Again, you're looking for something that's a little bit uh, flippy or that will fade out at the end, but uh, you wanna throw it on uh, at Anheuser kind of get it down this gap and hope it fades towards the basket. The safe play is just to throw something straight and have it turn right the whole way. We had no birdies on this uh, hole, actually. The cards had already so. gone out. Really? It's all good. That's incredible. No, Chris is oh, I remember we had it. We had a couple putts that uh, couple putts that, that, missed. that missed during our putting fiasco of that round. No birdies on this hole. Banana P2 looks perfect. That looks like it's fading down the hill greatly. Oh, maybe a little early left, but still not a bad spot. Give yourself a putt on this hole. This is the whole goal. Exactly. It's a tough gap to hit. Looks like Joe just releases early left, and that is jail over there. Yeah, it's not where you want to be. So now we have Chris. I wonder was Praxis. Yeah, nice neutral to slightly overstable. Putter. That looks a little bit left, but might be down there enough. Yeah, it sort of seems like the same spot James was in. Just didn't didn't go get moving right enough. You can sort of see the white tee pad there just in front of us. And the famous pole cap from Cam. <laughs> it's too pure. Oh, and there's the kick. Oh. The backhand from here is tough because you, you, you're going so far downhill, you just start getting height and then it just keeps going left. So Looks like this will be interesting to see what he can do. Half spike eyes are there. Interesting. Yeah, he might get a might get a run from there. Oh Joe. Absolute jail in there. Yeah, he is having a party in the bushes. Just looking for a hole. Coming in. Just trying to get out. And dut does an amazing job. Yeah, that's a that's gives a gives himself a look. From where he was, he's probably just outside the circle, maybe circle's edge. Could have been a lot, lot worse. And that nails went. it. What a parsing. Back to back <laughs> amazing parsing wow. from Joe. Wow, with the step pot too, so he's outside the circle for his part for his three. Oh, oh. bounces it in. Playing the uh, basket a little bit. So now James getting himself a 25 footer. Maybe yeah. a little bit more. This is a tough spot to putt from. You're going downhill. You give it a good run and it's going. Kind of oh. a great result for our card. <laughs> Oz goal. and James just bouncing him off the cage into the basket. <clears throat> See if Cam can convert. So on a very tough hole for people on day one, we have two birdies. Yeah. Two of the three on the day. Yeah, Gavin Cathy. Getting the other one, and then two more pars. So, very great result for our card going in on that hole. Going up for hole six now. If you remember, it's a low, a, a really powerful flex forehand or a really slow turnover. The goal is just stay out of the bush on the right and the left because both sides are almost a straight pitch out. Yeah, with this hole, you're going to see probably four forehands from this card. You won't see many backhands. Yeah, I'm curious what Joe's going to do. I know he's got a good forehand after seeing hole two. But this is a long way to go. 430 feet probably plays pretty close to 360 with the downhill. But it's a very tight 360. It's a very tight 360. James up first, going, I believe that's one of his rates. I think it might be, uh, he has this like really old pre-flight number destroyer. He just catches the big tree. Yeah. If you're in the first round, he almost aced it with uh, one of the, I think maybe that same disc. I believe that is a wraith. 
that a GG win from... Uh, no. With his forehand... Whoa. Whoa. Pulled I, very <clears throat> left. That's going to be yeah. a lot of danger <laughs> there for... He's like, yeah, you're in I there, think, I think that's a Halo Destroyer from Chris. Yo, would you like me to go <clears throat> spot? Uh -oh. Yeah, Oz's forehand has been a little off this round. I know, as, as I said, I think he had a, a knee injury or something like that that was kind of keeping him from throwing forehands. Joe also like kind of pulls neck. it off to the left. It's coming. Oh, but it yeah, fades it back yeah. and looks. He's in the fairway. He's happy with it. So He'll have a chance there for the uh, for a long look at a two. I like this little hyzer flip on the forehand just to get that extra distance for easy, easy, easy distance. For Chris, that looked like it could have been a lot worse, but he gets on the edge and gets around. Oh. Just clips a tree long, but give himself a look at the basket. That was all in the bush power forehand, and he almost gives it a chance to go in. And this is James Berg. That's two for two on that tree for James, though. Got Joe. Great shot. Nice little up and down. Take the par. Yeah, from that distance, you just want to make sure you're easy three. Cam, look at birdie, but from 60 to 70 feet range. Pretty long putt. Just leaves it short. Yeah, I don't think he's too up. I don't think he's too upset about that. It's from that distance, you're not really guaranteeing yourself much of a putt, so tap in three is pretty good on this hole. Chris just chains out from the bushes. So Chris almost, is, almost a miraculous three save. Yeah. James, after hitting the tree, left himself 25 feet. And just James feels, it seems like he's feeling confident on the greens in this round so far. Yeah, that's. That's for sure. James is very good at putting. When he's on, he doesn't miss. Chris takes his four. Joe tapping in for his three. Mm -hmm. Only two twos on the hole today. Adam Beatty and McKinley Baynard. Two young guys. Two young guys. Probably both throw massive forehands. Probably both parked. So, moving on to the dreaded hole number seven. 302 foot par three. There is OB to your right, uh, all the way up to the basket. So it makes this fairway very, very tight. With the amount of trees, a tree kick can put you OB very easily. You're probably going to see a lot of forehands from these guys just to keep it away from the OB. Kind of get up and stay away from that uh, right hand fairway. Yeah. I, I would assume there'd be a lot of more backhand in my opinion because the backhand fades away from the OB but we'll have to see. <clears throat> so there's what's what's James got there? I believe that's a distance driver going backhand. Well, he wants it all. And I believe oh, that no. is the same tree he hit the first round <laughs> as well. <laughs> this hole <laughs> showing its teeth this this tournament. Oh no. And that still might be in bounds, but that's coming close to the out of bounds line that starts there. He actually got saved with that second kick. He was going so far right. His OB mark would have been in the trees there to the right. Yeah, so this hole playing at point or one point zero six over par. I mean Wow, so over four. So almost a par four for the field. So <laughs> getting a three is almost like a birdie for these guys. So whatever disc this is. Oh, that's flippy. That looks perfect. As looks as like a good spot. Oh. Sits up on the hill. He seems okay with it. He's not out of bounds. So that's huge. Not a bad kick. He gets himself below the basket for his putt for his three. James up, hits a tree, and just settles down on the secondary fairway there to the right. Yeah, they both got long putts for their three save. 
can't cam for with the pole cat. The pole cat for two there now. Oh, <laughs> he tries to. Oh, and the same reaction happens <laughs> as day one, and you can see on his face that he is not happy with that. Chris just trying to play it safe. Yeah, that's Don't a smart play. play. No roll away, no problem. Yeah, just drop it down below the basket. James oh. running the putt, and it <laughs> catches an edge. Oh, it is going places. He's all the way halfway to the next hole already. Lays it up. So, looking at the tapping in his five there now. Joe going just high. And it sits down from, but he's going to be up on the hill, which is a very tough spot to get to. Damn. Oh, don't roll. Oh, no. This is this is what we're talking about at White Spruce, where if your putts aren't going in, there's a good chance they're rolling all the way down the hill. So now this is for bogey here. Oh, and he misses that too in it. Needs to stop. That's to show you this, how steep that hill is coming down on the top, just sliding like a toboggan. So, rough putting green for our card. I think, yeah. Chris taps in a par, actually. Taps in a three there. Yeah, he, he smartly laid it up under the rock, so there was no worry about it rolling away. So it looks like Cam is going to tap in for a double bogey here. Yeah, this is five strokes over par on our lead card. Yes, very much. And it's a very tough. Only four pars on the day. Yeah, that's a tough hole. A field of a field of twenty MPO players. Yeah. That's definitely a tough definitely a tough hole. Um, but it is twoable, so you can't really call it much more than a three. Joe's haven't shown off his athleticism there, jumping off the rocks. Surprised they didn't do a backflip or cartwheel. Moving on to hole eight, 331 par three. Again, something going to be a hyzer flip that holds and fades a little bit right. Yeah, this one's all about hitting the gap. If you don't, you're in trouble. If you kick right, you're in a lot of trouble. If you kick left, you can save your par. If you hit the gap perfectly, you uh, you get your chance at your two. <clears throat> so after the last hole, the card's going to be wanting to get some strokes back here. I believe this is uh, Chris's gator that we've seen yesterday a few times. Think so? Oh, maybe. In of a gator, <clears throat> I believe. It's a long way to go for a gator. Chris likes. He, he throws <laughs> it on 15 too, which is a oh, long yes. throw. Just Joe. pulls right, but there is kind of. Yeah, oh, he, it looks like he can make cage. that work. I'm seeing many things flying around. I can't tell what the disc mm -hmm. is. Yeah, because I said goal number one here is just hitting that gap. So if you're not hitting the gap, it doesn't matter how much power you put in it. And that looks perfect. Yeah, flex it out perfectly, going straight at the basket. Cam he also pulls it oh. oh, and what a that's a bad kick. Yeah, you can see just the frustration on Cam. Cam's reaction there just tells you he's frustrated with how the round's going so far. Oh, he got out. It's tough to say where he got to, but the fact that he can find a way out of that bush is is very good. <clears throat> so it looks like Chris is just going to lean out or stretch out backhand here, but very difficult shot still. To have something out of here is, is, is a blessing. You feel good about it. So any opportunity you get once you go in there is pretty good. Looks good. And that looks like he's going to have a nice putt. I don't know what just happened there. I wonder if that was Joe's, where Joe's drive landed. 
Chris. Just... Well, Joe was tucked way in on the in the right, so that would have been a second shot. Maybe he maybe he just quickly pitched out of the bush and the camera never caught it. So that was for Cam's par there. Yes. And this is where <clears throat> James's drive landed. What a shot. Easy, easy two for James. That's how you would design the hole. That's how you drop the hole. Did uh, did Joe, did Joe make the putt? Joe must have made a putt there because oh, oh, he, I guess he made, <laughs> did, did, did did he forget to putt out? I think that might have just happened. Either that or he wanted a running start for his putt. So that was for Joe's three as well. So. Card taking birdie, two pars, and one bogey. So, even par for the card. Mm -hmm. Move on to hole nine, 450 foot par three. Very tough par three. Takes a big, big throw to get there. Yeah, this is a hole where you're either getting your, either you're, you're either eagling it or you're getting your three. If you take anything worse than that, then you've made a mistake somewhere. This is actually a par three, the white side. This is you're hoping to get the birdie. Yes. Par, you're, oh, you yes. walk away with your par, you're happy. Yes. You're either yeah, you're either birdieing it or you're ha you're walking away with your three. And it's it's a good hole. It just it, it's really tough to get to the basket. Even if you throw the perfect 450 foot throw, catch one of these trees coming in, and you're left with a 60 footer into usually a headwind to try and make your two. Yeah, and especially with this green, it's very visually deceiving as well looks like the basket's are way farther than it actually is, especially when you're playing into the green. J James going the forehand, like we said last time. It plays well, but you do need to swing it way left in order to get it to uh, penetrate into a putting position. I believe we actually have the opposite. I think we have a right to left headwind for, for this round compared to a left to right. CG. We had oh, this oh. looks great. That's the angle you want. Yeah. He's telling it to get up. And he gets a great skip. That's going to be about 35 feet left, maybe 40 feet left. That'll be a, a putt out of it. That'll be a putt for sure. Oh, oh no. The frustrations. I don't, I don't know. I think he may have slipped right there. Slip plus. That, that, like, that's, that was not. There was no power on it. It was all. I think I think that was a slip. Had to be. Grass tee pads. You never know what might you might step on. Yeah, it gets <clears> probably <throat> twenty feet off the tee pad, but that is a great recovery shot, though, giving him a self a chance to go up and down. I don't know. That's pretty. He's still pretty far away. He must have not had a run up there. It gives him a seventy, eighty feet. Yeah, it gives him a chance to get yeah. up and down for the. Bo the bogey. The bogey. Yeah, after hitting the first tree on the on this hole, getting the four, I guess it's pretty good. That's one of the biggest challenges actually of the blue tee pads. That's white spruces. There's grass tee pads. Mm -hmm. um, is Joe long? He is long, putting back. And what oh a putt! Oh my goodness! He just threw that like 480 feet. That was a and then crush. made and then made a, a 40 foot comebacker. That was an amazing two. You, I don't believe. There was another two the entire weekend. I believe that was the only birdie on this hole from Blue. Hmm. The Blue long tee pads. So that was an amazing shot. That's absolutely huge, Joe. Oh, Cam just gets caged. Uh, Cam's taking a big number on this hole. Stand corrected. There was one more birdie by Nahan. Right, he had not parked at round one. So one <clears> and <throat> two birdies on the day for Joe there. That's crazy. Cam, rough hole. Yeah, Just taking a five on. with that missed putt there. That's That hole you're drawing it up as either a, a two or a three. To take a five is uh, definitely heartbreaking. So move on to hole 10, the elevated ace hole for the tournament. And uh, it's going to have a mando here on the left tree. You see painted with the blue mark. It's going to be a Mando right. It's going to force you to go down the gap. Very tough shot. Making you throw something straight at it. A little Heiser flip putter mid-range. Yeah, Whatever you got, they go straight. Cuts off the line that was there. 
and the big forehand line. So, testing these players a little bit. Joe looks to put that I left don't... and miss the man. He could save a three if it <clears throat> Seemed to be smiling. I wonder if that meant it didn't miss it. Very good possibility. Or he's just laughing at laughing at the shot. Oh, he's running James it. James seems to just mastered this hole. Beautiful. You see, he was happy with that for sure. That was a great shot up the gut. He grabbed the bird. I think believe the only birdie in round one. One of the only few birdies. Looks like he has a birdie attempt at it again. And Chris <clears> just gets unlucky and catches the early tree. Yeah, he definitely definitely pulled that way too hard. After missing the mando on hole, the first round, maybe that got in his head. I don't know. Beautiful. Smooth. What a nice skip. Man. That's, what a I believe, ground. Cam's rock. Yeah. And this is not a pleasant spot to be. <laughs> he didn't miss the mando, so he yeah. has to play from here. It's it's. You didn't miss the mando, but you get punished by all the thorns yeah. that are in there. What is he... Oh, I need to stop before it goes to the road OB. That... Oh, he Joe, didn't Joe. miss the mando, <laughs> but... Uh, See, they're going really aggressive here, but realistically, that, okay. you could have just laid that yeah, up to the Mando and, and, and had just the harder shot coming in. It's After watching Oz do what he did, I can understand your thought process. Coconut but... caramel, and when you smoke it, it's just no bueno. So he's looking, I believe that's his zone. Get up and down. Take the bone. Beautiful. Okay. Very tough. If you don't get through the Mando early... It can be a very <clears throat> dangerous hole. And that's the thing. If Even if you don't miss the Mando, but you go left, you might as well have missed the Mando because you're laying up to the... Oh, big what pop from Cam. Pot. Chris wow. really gets close to that road. He really did. That yeah. road does play OB. Cam smashing that big pop for the two. That is huge. Chris looking, looking to get his par here. And oh, saves he does it. it. It's two massive putts from our card here on the 10th hole. Makes James come up to his 15-footer thinking, what do we got to do to get strokes? So that's another birdie. I think that's a birdie for both. For him on both rounds. Yes, it was. On this hole. Fantastic. And here, here's Joe just tapping in his four without missing the Mando. That's, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad on that hole. That hole can get you pretty quickly. So that's it for our front nine of our final round. Yeah, it was a great round. Yeah. James and uh, Chris extending their lead, kind of making a two-horse race yeah. going into the back. Cam, Cam's struggling quite a bit there in the, in the beginning, kind of pulled him out of it. So we got we got a, a good, good race down the finish. Well, my name's Spencer Young. And I'm Chris Brown. And we'll see you guys on the round three back 10.